Today we're going to test to see if these USB fans will blow up your USB driver. It's a device that turns mechanical, excuse me, electrical energy into mechanical. The motors can also be generator, as if you turn them yourself, they'll actually produce a voltage. These devices are what are called an inductive load. They resist the electric flow and in the process store energy. As a byproduct of Lenz's law, motors produce what is called a back EMF. So whenever you uh, apply a voltage, you'll get a negative voltage back at you. So this can cause an issue on your motor lines where you have a voltage going where you don't want it to go. It's going the wrong way. These motors are what are called to and referred to as DC brushless motors. These consist of a shaft, brushes, commutator, rotor coils, and stator magnets. So this shaft is what allows you to utilize that mechanical energy and convert it to whatever form you want. The rotor coils are the primary mechanism that induces motion through the magnetic field. So the brush block is the contact point on the motor, which allows current to flow through. This contact point uh, on the motor is what is called the stator. When the motor is moving, rubs against the stator to ensure full contact the whole entire time. But when this happens, friction and noise is generated by the motor and that enters your system. So each commentator has a different section. And these sections ensure that polarity is only on specific segments of the motor. When the brush block crosses over these gaps, additional noise is created and generated into your system. So when voltage is applied, current flows through the motor and the motion is created due to the opposing force with the stator magnet. All right, now that we know how a motor operates, or at least kind of familiar with the concept, let's go ahead and put together a test up that we can characterize uh, how the motor performs. When we take a look at what we learned previously, we realized that you can have negative voltage spikes when you're setting up your circuit, and you can also have EMI, you can have voltage spikes throughout the whole entire thing, both positive or negative, because of your motor running. We're going to take the default configuration of motor. This is, has no caps, just the wires. And then we're going to take that default configuration of the five volt regulator, and we're going to see what happens. So if you take a look on the screen, what we got right here, you can clearly see that there's a lot of noise within the system. We're going to have to clean that up in order for it to work properly. If you get that on your board and your computer and that noise is ringing throughout, the least of your worries is some data flips here and there. All right, it's time to attempt to blow up some circuits. So we got a first experiment here. We're going to take our five volt regulators. Regulate. These bad boys, these L7805. 5 volt regulators that can handle up to 1.5 amps. And we're going to take our suspect USB fan, this little $3 fan, and we're going to see what happens. We can get this to uh, blow up. So the configuration and setup is I'll set the voltage to go into these at 10 volts and have an output to here for 5 volts. I'm going to use two capacitors, the ones that are specified on the data sheet, and we're going to see what happens. All right, for this next setup, we're going to change our circuit on our five voltage regulator. Well, you have your base configuration. Most people don't actually use it that way, and they add additional components on there. I have this additional capacitors that are added onto the circuit board 0.33 microfarad capacitor along with a 0.47 microfarad capacitor it's the capacitors are named and i've I actually put on a diode <laughs> all that set on to the circuit the capacitors are there be a low impedance path for specific frequencies and allows those high frequency noise to find a path and not disrupt our circuit the diode is to uh, block those voltages that go negative. 
Oh, oh, what, what's up, boss? Really, really, Brunky? Forty-seven and a thirty-three. Oh, those are really lovely values, aren't they? Everybody likes them. Did you think to uh, spread out your coverage a little bit more? Hmm. Ah, I know what you're saying. So we can spread out and get a little bit wider range of capacitors, and we can get more coverage. How about this? Let's just put all of them in. Every single one. What? You want to do what? Put all the capacitors on there. You know we ain't got the budget for that. Well, this is the first spin. Don't we got to do like two or three of these? We got to do all these testing and uh, we always find something, right? You going to do another respin of the board later? All right. It's on your dime, though. It's on your dime. How about we do eight capacitors per input and output of circuits? It's not going to happen. You get three. Three per circuit. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. Just spread it out. All right. So let's pull up the uh, oscilloscope. So when you look right there, you can obviously tell that noise within that circuit is quite a bit less. Do not have voltage spikes that are going into the negative. So that's a good sign that we're on the right path and we're slowly fixing the circuit. Brunky checking in. So made a little update with our experiment. It's getting pretty hot. It's getting a little toasty. It was down regulating the circuit despite it not pulling an amp and a half. So I went ahead and threw one of these bad boys on there. This little heat sink to help dissipate the heat and help it run properly. So in addition to that, I added some popcorn. Is it going to get hot enough to pop this popcorn? Let's perform our next test. We're going to characterize the motor with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor across the leads of the motor. This should help reduce the noise in the system. So one thing about these decoupling capacitors, you're going to want to put them as close to the source as possible. Putting these caps on the motor should eliminate the most amount of noise in the system. For our next test step, we're going to install 2.47 microfarads capacitors across the two leads, just like this. And they're going to be tied to chassis ground. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this oscilloscope says about this configuration. All right, so we try to break the circuit with that fan. Try to pop some popcorn. It did happen. We're going to modify that setup. Not only one fan, let's do two. Let's see how this will go. Come on, take your guesses. Tell me, is it going to blow the circuit or is it going to be a proper regulator and not break? Oh, maybe I'll be able to pop the popcorn with this bad boy. For our final motor configuration, we're going to add a, all three capacitors on there. In addition, we are going to twist the pairs of the wires. So what this does is it decouples. So this is uh, almost the ultimate form for reducing the noise coming from a motor. There's one additional step, a ferrite beat, but I don't think that's going to be needed this time. So here's the video. Brunky here with another experiment update. Two fans did not end up blowing out the circuit. What we did instead was we attempted to stall current. What we did here was held both fans on both sides still by the ends. So that way they couldn't turn. So instead of being able to turn, they had to be held in place. And what that does is it makes it to where the current only can flow through that one branch of the motor circuit. It's supposed to uh, increase the current. So we'll see if it blows. All right. So let's uh, get our experiment set up with the fan, a little fan, and our little USB device. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask you guys, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think the circuit's going to blow? Yes or no? And if it does blow, how do you think it will? Will it stop working? Will it spark and blow something up? Will it? Uh, 
continue to work and pull a, a short power where it's pulling in the power source. This is the point of the experiment where disaster starts to happen. So we're going to put on our, our good fan onto the circuit and let's see what happens. So as you can see, looking at the scope, this doesn't look very good. This, this circuit may not survive after all. And keep in mind, this is, this is our little ideal fan. So you take this straight out of the box. You gonna trust this with your motor? Hmm? So I was just sitting here, minding my own business, and something interesting happened. What happened? Half of this fan running on this device. It decided to do something interesting. Take a look at the video. What you see here is a lot of the noise, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bam, it goes up to nine volts. So what does this mean? So you notice all the noise disappeared. So the IC chip that the voltage regulator that was driving this fan decided to short, rendering my night volt supply as the main device running this fan. You also notice that the fan sped up. What happened was short to power. The thing about the circuit board is you plug it in, it doesn't work anymore. Or I should say, you have nine volts on the output, but you take a visual inspection of this guy, there's no burn marks or anything. We blew up circuit. Boom. Nothing fancy happened. Nothing smelled. It was so uneventful. No burning circuits. So, yeah. These fans can blow up your USB. So what are my recommendations? You shouldn't use fans on your USB. If you take a look at the spec for USB 1.0 and 2.0, these fans are not compatible. Maximum amount of voltage drop allowed by a device plugged into the USB port is 350 millivolts. So on ours, we saw a swing of negative 10 all the way down from five to negative 10. All the different Voltage regulators can come into a a different uh, flavors. You have some that I can build up that can clearly handle the load of the fan without an issue, and then you have some like this guy that just blew under the stress. Tell me, is it worth it? Plugging a five dollar fan in, into your USB port just to blow your component. I mean, think about it. 